Okay, let's start today's session. And I am from Huawei and Gaoxiang, and、uh, today I'd like to talk about、uh, several items. This is actually a mentioned topic on I LSF. Well, back then I was using English, and I'm not pretty sure、uh, you understand it. And previously we have fewer slides, but I didn't finish it. So today I'm only gonna use Chinese. So today we have simultaneous interpreting. So、um, briefly,、uh, this is about me.、Um, I'm working for Huawei for three years now after graduation, and mainly、uh, in the OS kernel lab. And mainly we are working on the embedded technologies for a smartphone, and I'm focusing on.、Um, System documentations, for example, F two, F four, and we are doing fixing of bugs. And I also pro、uh, provide several uh, propo uh, proposals to Huawei, and、um, some of the solutions has been adopted. And、um, Yarrow FS is a random picked name, and、uh, well, no matter what.、Um, It's not a big issue, and this solution was meant to meet internal request. And starting from here, annually, I'm gonna do some upstream work、uh, regarding the storage. And so every year, we will have a request for.、Um, With、uh, storage optimization, so it's relevant with upstream. So this is what we do yet last year, and we are meeting demands in the marketplace. And the largest one is that、um, for the low-end products, some of the 16、uh, gigabytes are still making deliveries, and that's targeting for developing countries' markets. And the storage is pretty limited; it's around 16 gigabytes. It's pretty small or lower, and So, for Android room, which is growing for Android, so this is a challenging issue. Upon getting the smartphone,、uh, actually, the storage space is pretty limited. It's not very good for user experience, and so judging from me, I think that we need to find a better solution. And we need to give more space to the clients, and、um, we can understand that Android system has a lot of、um, a lot of、uh, problems regarding the clearing of the smartphones, and we need to clearing the space frequently. And so we consider our first compression, and at the beginning in 2016.、Um, Back then, Google proposed one solution that is Squash FS. Squash FS is actually supported by official tech team. And back then, starting from H1 of 2016,、um, we are now bring the, we are now bringing this product into reality. I won't go into great details here. And all the smartphones. Uh, if uh, we installed Squash FS into smartphones, then there are still other problems. But we have foreseen that, and still Google chose Squash FS to、uh, do the compre compression for smartphone space. And finally, we select、uh, to focus on read-only storage space and UFS. This year, just do the same on ATC 2019 meeting. They release a thesis saying that gener generally speaking, they introduce more information. They give you more information about this solution.、Uh, next month, we will release this version and.、Uh, Lots of the commentators asked us why are we trying to do this read-only compression. Well, read-only compression is a very simple solution, I think. But still, why are we not choosing other more complicated 
solutions? Well, uh, first we are meeting demands. Well, if we want to support read and write, and if we want to support I.O. pattern, then the compression won't be as effective. Despite the fact we have other uh, tools for compression, if we introduce uh, this I.O. pattern supporting uh, overwritten, then um, the effectiveness won't be that good. So we are all assessing documents that can be compressed. For example, photos. Well, um, if you do compression, then uh, it will damage the quality. For text that's depending on the quantity of each uh, client and well in comparison uh, there are lots of limitations then if you are supporting IO pattern then it's not suitable for compression and finally as we can see we can only uh, focus on binary documents and sharing libraries, most of them are read-only files. So, finally, uh, we choose to focus on read-only files to do compression. So, we basically simplify the issues that we face. So, last year, we started the implementation of this project. That's why. And, finally, we choose a solution which is in accordance with the solution provided by Google in 2016 uh, we introduced Squash FS we discover a lot of issues for example uh, the overhead of memory is pretty serious and like I've mentioned uh, they're using uh, Bob Head and PTV Bob Hash and also, they are using 128k block size, and we are trying to minimize the block size, but the effect on this is not that good. It's getting things worse, and especially if, it's, if we change the configuration to 128k then actually that's the best they can do we have a v benchmark later for you and you can see and squash fs the megadata and data processing mostly we can only do this uh, synchronously if we want to analyze it then we have to ready the megadata first for example uh, if we do the computing for compression then well actually we have to measure the size of the compression blocks and we have to focus on its final input and we have to uh, prepare for the read ahead and it's not very good for the implementation of uh, performance and Google has already optimized the uh, squash FS but there are other index indexes that's been damaged so that's why we're not adopting the squash FS solution and finally we raise one question apart from these issues we have encountered is there any other ways for us to improve the performance regarding compression and decompression and finally we come up with this uh, solution which is YARO-FS and we propose uh, compression for a fixed output it's compact compression and uh, for example um, for the storage of memory it is better and in next page we will see that the overall compression rate is around 8k and the density has been improved greatly and 
considering this, the density has been improved and the compression rate has been improved accordingly. So uh, for most of the I.O. cases, we can get a smaller sized I.O. and we save a lot of I.O. and convert it for um, the computing of CPU and we improve the performance for reading somehow. So that's why we choose the fixed output mechanism. Basically we choose it for um, higher compression rate under the same ratio, assigned ratio, and we can do compression uh, on site. So zero copy for uh, memory and actually why? Later we're going to touch on it. Um, well, we can get around 4% of the performance improvement if we go through the process once. Uh, well, I'm still working on it. This is what we're doing in uh, this past six months. And also, as we can see, we have three uh, compression solutions. Mm. Also, after the compression uh, for what's left in the cluster, we will not use it, and we can still deliver that. And against this scenario, it's not necessary for us to do it. There's one issue. If we choose a smaller sized compression block, then some of the data, the compression rate is pretty low. Well, that's we are risking uh, the waste of memory room and memory space. So this is the several available uh, compression model. So. Overly speaking, uh, this is the mirror sized large or small. And we want to achieve the fixed rates output, which is 8K. And so we can deliver 4K to uh, and change it, convert it to 8K. But if it's starting from 8K, we can bring it to 12K. And so the storage rate is way better than 4K, and it's around 8K. So later we will have a sequential analysis, give you an overview, and we can make a comparison, and you can see the difference. So um, upon delivering this mirror, and this is the analysis we've done, and still we're focusing, and we're still following the instructions from I/O and. So the um, performance is not that good and fixed output for compressed document system we have two ways to do decompress. First, uh, like SquareShift has first we read all the compressed data into the quick device. For example, Bob using the interface of Bob Head. And finally, the second way is to read all the compressed data to immediately buffer and uh, decompress, for example, to BTRFS and release it later. And for these two ways, uh, first, it might cause some interrupt in page crash. And for example, if we choose SquishFS, then uh, we choose then. Uh, fixed input of 4k and then the round that will be around 50 percent of compressed data uh, of the original file are added in the into the page cache how are your list as well and it's hard to compress the documents directly if some of the compressed pages are reclaimed that means we're going to consume all, more memory then that's bad for uh, custom experience and if we are putting in uh, squish if are you our list 
if we add a lot of these documents into it compared with the uncompressed parts, then we, ca we are causing uh, disruption and the, that's for path number one and path number two. Uh, if it's fixed output and fixed input, some of the compressed data might cross the boundary of storage. And these compressed blocks are storage in the memory and um, it's like it's bounded together so it's slightly better if we're using fixed output. So this is slightly better. I think as this is an option. So if we're using temporary buffer, there is one major issue for fixed input. If we have ready to be used data, but we cannot make full use of it. So this is a very important uh, topic. So um, if we're using fixed output, judging from the compressed block, this 4K or the whole compressed block, they, uh, it can be decompressed fully and we can choose um, other st uh, strategies to handle this compressed block and the Euro FS we have two dimensions to uh, deal with the compressed block first it's a hybrid compressed strategy decompressed strategy we are not apply for a uh, temporary buffer and the Android uh, store memory is a bit limited. We are doing cache decompression and so it's random um, selection in decompression process. And second, uh, we're using EFSIO and this uh, compressed block is fully decompressed then we're using EFSRO to do the decompression and EFSRO are basically doing multiplexing and avoiding uh, application for a temporary buffer and the EFSIO can also serve uh, when we're doing the on-site decompression so this is the uh, first solution that we can adapt and second is that we are we can do synchronized and asynchronized um, decompression and we can we try to minimize the overhead if we want to do switch between context and um, we are using the um, asynchronized uh, decompression and we open a world queue and this is dimension two and like we've mentioned we have to uh, following optimization one if the compression rate is small then we will choose cache decompression and it's only two pages and we can run full decompression that's optimization number one and optimization number two is that we if we choose uh, asynchronized or synchronized uh, decompression the major difference is that um, the pages we get after the decompression and we have an um, asynchronized or synchronized read ahead then we will choose um, the compression or decompression strategies accordingly and the read ahead interface is not completed yet and if we see better yields uh, we will choose this solution and implicit IO decompression how can we do it? It's introduced by EuroFS as well and 
um, we are doing multiplexing for document pages and first we discovered that um, we need it. We have two reasons. First, when we do the cache decompression, just like squish FS, then uh, we will cause interruption in cache. And second, we have a lot of requests for reading and we're still waiting for I.O. And if we're adapting temporary buffer, then before depression, uh, before decompression, we will not release this uh, I.O. patent. And Huawei smartphones are focusing on making photos. This is one of the highlights point. The workload is pretty heavy for memory. Well, uh, we have to occupy lots of sequential memory for photos and the workload is pretty heavy in this case and temporary buffer in early stage uh, we're using temporary buffer but uh, it's not sustainable it's not very appropriate for smartphones and finally So in extreme cases, might cause a lot, uh, the, occur the occurrence of a lot of uh, temporary buffers, and that's why we choose uh, the other solutions. And to serve our needs, and uh, it follows this way because uh, I will compress it. Yes, for the last uh, part. For the last part, if you can see this is continuous, yes, we can see the last page of it will be my target because it's not compressed yet, so it can be copied. This is the in-place iodine compression introduction, and uh, we introduce placed on we introduce another sign that is the compression in place. We know that for LZD7, this uh, decompression algorithm, it can support employees decompression. It is actually, to put it simply, the sequence after the compression is shorter than the sequence after the decompression. And, uh, but in theory, we need to have the boundary calculation. So we actually introduced a, a prediction condition. We want to make the compressed block to make it in the last part. And we will detect the boundary value. If it, uh, the OM and uh, the I end, if if the margin reaches the safety value, then the decompressed decompression algorithm means that it can ensure the decompression in place. We can see that uh, the decompression method we have this in place I/O um, based on this decompression. If it's not safe, we will use a process viewer buffer and. Uh, we will put it in the process viewer buffer. This is for the now in place decompression. If the margin reaches the safety value and we will do the decompression in place, it can it can skip all these processes. We can put it in this buffer and we won't we will skip some issues. So this margin, I will discuss it later, but I'm not sure if I have time. So you can check my PPT. I updated it last night. So we have to do the optimization. So if I have this uh, fixed uh, output, so this uh, decompression length is longer, and uh, 
based on our observation for the NEEP9, if the decompression rate is very low, then the one page will be turned into two pages. But when sometimes they can be turned into more pages. So for decompression, maybe some previous pages they have they have been updated and even map. So so for the updated cache page, we cannot uh, reuse it, recover it. So we need to use a temporary buffer to fill in and. Uh, for the fixed output uh, decompression, suppose we have uh, have uh, we need uh, the temporal buffer, we need to apply it for each. But RS uh, LZ4 based on this uh, algorithm, I think this is a window, and uh, this is a sliding window. It uses the previous decompression data, so it can only be put within this uh, sliding window. And for it, it is 64 KB. It's about uh, 14, uh, 16 pages, and uh, we need to have these 16 pages. But right now, the, this is a kind of application plan. The plan we have applied, so we need to check it in detail whether. It is actual use. This is for the decompression of the memory, and uh, I want to talk about uh, EuroFS. It's on disk. EuroFS. It's actually apart from the compression. It is designed for the read only, and the metadata can be designed very simple. And uh, yes, this is uh, its character size. It's uh, 4K block size, and the metadata can be mixed uh, with the data. And uh, so we have uh, flexible enough for MKFS to play with it and to effectively make use of the space. We have the two versions of inos but so uh, it's not sure why some byte if some byte can be shared and there is a difference in the length yes we have the time stamp so we don't have some previous issues if we use v2 then each own file can his own Time step, uh, but for V1 we have this own general time step. But uh, we, I think V1 is enough, and it can support the inline in the end of the data. It can, can support the STATX, and it can support the compacted indexes. Yes, it's uh, this compacted indexes, so as to further. Yes, you can check this link below. And uh, this is our micro benchmark. You can see that uh, EuroFS. Yes. There's a comparison here. Why does Squash FS, the 28, 128K is higher? Because if it, it wants to decompress the block, it needs to read a lot of I.O. But uh, it was turned into a pre-read uh, mode. Yeah, if the block size is larger and it was read very randomly. And uh, there's a lot, lot of things need to be read. I think with enough uh, memory, then it has its advantages. But uh, right now, the storage is limited. So we cannot um, suppose that uh, all the compressed data can be in the memory. Then we can just read only once. Then it's not very practical. So this is based on our limited storage. This use case. So the benchmark, you can see it here. 
Oh, actually, we have a lot of work to do recently, and we are making a new plan. So we, we just give this comparison here. And uh, at a higher compression decompression rate, I think it, uh, it has its advantages compared to AFK4. And uh, for the improvement of the performance, I think we can choose to use the compression to improve the performance. This is our choice. Yes. I can URFS the technology in for this read-only mode. This is part of my plan for the users, so as to choose their read-only wires to compress themselves. It's a kind of a balance between CPU and storage. So it depends on the choices of the all users. If the CPU is good, in good condition. And uh, the storage uh, is a little bit uh, not that good, but I think the advantages can be very clear at this in this case. This is our LAN real app launching. This MTK product. We have these uh, 13 applications, but I cannot tell you the name of the application. It's cited from the paper and it's not the newest later data, it's just the data for the landing. You can see the minus means that it has been optimized. And you can see the rate here, but some part, they are not optimized. So in general, it kind of enhanced the, the starting of the application. And then this is Euro or FS upstream progress. Last year, July, the Euro FS was uh, kind of uh, started as a station. So it was a shame. We want to move it out. But uh, in place, the compression. Yes, it's pending to be merged for the Linux 5.3. And they will want to it uh, move out of the stage four from the from the 5.5. This is our landing progress. We support LZ4. Yes, we optimize it. And uh, it has been landed in the version after 9.0.1. And uh, it has been launched into the market, uh, these new mar products. So the in-place thin compression will be used in our new products. And uh, I hope to upstream to USP. But we need time. And hope it can be used uh, in wider scenarios. So my to-do list uh, is here. Yes, this, you can see it. These are my references. Thank you. So any questions from the floor? I have a question. I have seen it in news. Your FS is uh, moving very fast. So is it for the reading of the compressed file or plus the time of the decompression? Yes, it plus the time of decompression. So compared to EST, does it have a very big advantage? Yes, within a certain decompression rate, you can see that uh, the decompression rate is about, is about 56%. So com plus the decompression time. So how can you do it? So different files have a different uh, decompression rate. Yes, this is a range I give you within a certain level, range of the decompression rate. I mean, whether you choose to decompress this file is up to you, yes, for the mobile phone. Because I want to optimize the performance. So if, the opti if the decompression rate is very low, then I will choose not to decompress it. And uh, when the decompression rate is very high, we can save a lot of I.O. 
Yes, actually, we replace the I/O with the CPU. And uh, it, another thing is about interconnectivity. If the system can auto detect another system, so can we just uh, skip the uh, compression part? Yes. When we are compressing it, we can try for the different uh, de compressed block. We can tell the its uh, compression rate. Whether the rate is within our reach, then we will try to c compress it. Yes, we will try to compress some part of the file and uh, try not to compress some part of the part. Yes, you will try to figure it out whether you can fi compress it uh, in ahead. Yes, and we have this backlist, uh, some extension. Name, we will try not to decompress it, uh, compress it. Yes, I mean, I plan it ahead. I think Android has its own extension name. And uh, for our traffic of the mobile phone is uh, becoming larger and larger, and the transmission rate is becoming higher and higher. How can you see the EROBF uh, is trend? Yes, based on our ERF is a 3.0 speed. Actually, it meets our expectations in terms of the yields. I think there is not a big change. You can see that, yes, I have shown you in my PPT, it has advantages com um, compared to not compressing it. I mean, the compressed file can be read faster than that uh, without uh, being compressed. You can run it yourself. You can try it yourself. The ARM, the CPU, the high-end products, the CPU is str getting stronger and stronger yearly. And for the low-end products, you can see the, the configuration rate. I think the I.O. is a little bit lower for us. So if I want to use this file system, do you have any tools to evaluate the overall performance of this file system? You can just choose some data grid and if you, you can run it yourself. So I have a question. I'm doing the embedded products and the many products. They have some requirement, low requirements for the cost. So does it support the maintenance service? No. It's similar to the squash. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.